I think the central bankers, Mr. Powell, people like that, should be extremely grateful to Bitcoin. What you've seen now is a changing and an evolution of how the SEC is thinking about approving these products. When they first approved the Bitcoin futures products, that was the first time we had a signal from them that they began to get comfortable with Bitcoin as an asset class. Because um, it's, it's the last warning they're going to get. They are, they, they are, they've chosen to ignore it um, and, um, and they will have to you know, pay the consequences for that in, in the years ahead. Why, why has Bitcoin not uh, yet gone to 100,000 to a million dollars of Bitcoin? Why has it not yet converged with gold or, um, or even with the equity markets more broadly? And what, what, is, what is going to, you know, what is, what is it going to take for this, for this to happen? And, uh, you know, I, I know that sort of the ways we often talk about um, businesses or technologies is, you know, how, how great the technology is, how great the code is, how great the math is, uh, you know, how, 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 how it's sort of innovative. But I, I want to sort of suggest that we should maybe think of, we should think of, um, we, we should think of it at least in one dimension as sort of a political question. And it's a, it's a movement and it's a political question whether this movement is going to um, succeed or whether, um, whether the enemies of the movement are going to succeed in stopping us. And, uh, and so I want to maybe end with um, you know, an enemies list, a list of people who I think are stopping Bitcoin. And uh, you know, they're, they're, they all have, many of them have, there's sort of a lot, lot of them, they tend to have this sort of nameless, faceless, bureaucrat perspective, which is of course one of the ways they hide. Um, but I'm gonna, we're going to try to try to expose them and, uh, and, and realize that, uh, that this is sort of what we have to fight. For, uh, for Bitcoin to go 10x or 100x from here. So, um, enemy number one. I, I think he's sort of, um, I, I think the sort of the, the sociopathic uh, grandpa from Omaha is, um, you know, uh, is, is perhaps the most honest and the most direct in it. Um, and, um, and you have to sort of think of, it's, it's, it's of course, on some level, these people are always just talking their book. It's sort of, they have some sort of institutional bias. Uh, it's long, you know, a list of woke companies. It's, 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 it's somehow long, this, um, this uh, fiat money system. And, um, and of course, um, if, the, if it was, if it, if the, you know, there's always a sense if you're a, if you're a money manager, you want to pretend that it's complicated to invest. And uh, if, if, if all you have to do is buy Bitcoin, you know, that's that's like that's like ridiculous. All these people are out of business. You know, it's uh, I mean, there's, there was a version of this also with gold. They never liked gold either because if all you had to do was own gold, um, that's something everybody can do. Um, but uh, the, the, there is something. There's sort of an institutional bias, a, a um, sort of a um, center-left political bias. Um, you know, there's of course um, there's of course the um, um, there's of course the New York City uh, banker bias. Um, Jamie Dimon, J.P. Morgan, you can get quotes like this from, from any n number of these people. Uh, and then, then I would say, um, you know, another, uh, another one, even more obscure, Larry Fink, the CEO of BlackRock, where, um, you know, uh, if, if you have these sort of large institutional investors, um, they need to be allocating some of their money to Bitcoin. When they manage state pension funds in the US, or, 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 or they, they get trillions of dollars in assets, when they choose not to allocate to Bitcoin, that is a deeply political choice, and we need to be pushing back on them. We need to say, you know, um, you have to you have to get on board on this. And uh, the, um, the 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 Larry Fink quote is sort of a rep representative, I think, of a whole genre of anti-Bitcoin uh, things, where uh, you know, um, and you, you have to always put it in some context. But pro-blockchain, pro-blockchain is an anti-Bitcoin term, very typically. So it's like, I love the blockchain, but you know, not so sure about this Bitcoin, don't need Bitcoin, we can move on to the blockchain, move along, this is not, you know, not the currency you're looking for, move along, move along. And, um, and uh, but you know, if we sort of combine um, all of these things, you know, I, I would sort of put, put the label on, um, on the sort of, uh, you know, on, on the sort of, um, uh, the, the, the label they've come up with, and perhaps the real enemy, is uh, ESG. Um, 
and um, and which you know I, 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 I you know it's always sort of unclear what it means. You know, um, it, you might think of it as not charitable for me to sort of name some enemies here, but I, I think that ESG is just a hate factory. It's a factory for naming enemies, and uh, we should not be allowing them to do that. Or, um, or that you know, of course, you can you can sort of always ask the question, you know, what's the difference between ESG and CCP, the Chinese Communist Party? You know, they are they are into social and governance. Um, you know, environmental is sort of fake. Uh, it's probably also fake in a lot of these cases, but, uh, but I always think when you think ESG, you should be thinking CCP.